Not much can be done with a transverse gasifier of the Gwen Poulin type. It consists essentially of tuyeres and a grid in front of them. Could there be anything new to come up with? But a Soviet engineer Aaron Jenin proposed his own version of a transverse gasifier with steam being heated inside the chamber. Jenin is the author and co-author of a whole series of wonderful books and works on gasifiers, remarkable for their comprehensibility. I must tell you that I really enjoyed reading books by Soviet authors who wrote about river transport with gasifiers. Their books, like Jenin's, are distinguished by clarity and comprehensibility and aim to explain to their readers what they are writing about. In contrast, Mezin's book is complex. Or, for example, Yudishkin stretched out a whole chapter about how to calculate a cyclone in his 1955 book Gasifier Tractors. I would give a prize to a person who can grasp what Yudishkin wrote about cyclone filters. Soviet authors, who wrote understandably and enjoyably, came and went in the 1930s, before World War II. Much of what was written afterward was either very difficult or impossible to read. Jenin was apparently born in St. Petersburg. In 1923 to 1926, he lived in the orphanage number 234 and graduated 12th school. Then he worked as a pioneer leader in orphanages for several years. Having graduated from the Leningrad Institute of Mechanical Engineering, he worked at the Central Research Institute of the River Fleet. He became a doctor of technical sciences. Jenin survived the war and filed patents on gasifiers also in the 1950s. He received a whole series of interesting patents concerning gasifiers for riverboats. Both books and patents referred to river transportation, which was his area of interest. I will show Jenin's patents in other videos. I must tell you that while reading his works, I understood that Jenin was very deeply immersed in the gasifier topic. He had read and thought about it a lot. He didn't just repeat the same things from book to book, as, for example, Ginsberg did. Now let's look at how he attempted to modify the transverse gasifier in order to heat the steam inside the gasification chamber. He filed his patent on May 8, 1939. Air was supplied to the transverse gasifier hopper from both sides through tuyeres, marked with the number 5. There is a cone-shaped heating spiral 8 in the middle of the reactor to heat steam. This steam is supplied to the tuyeres marked with the number 4. Thus, the steam ejection reduces the tuyere resistance. The gas output pipe is marked with the number 7. The ash and slag are discharged in the spot marked with the number 11. Water is supplied to spiral 8, from the bottom and comes out from the top as steam. Jenin applied a number of useful techniques in this patent. First, he reduced the tuyere resistance by steam ejection. It is known that when heated, tuyeres increase their resistance to air by one and a half times compared to starting cold temperatures. This is a solid value for the engine filling factor. Secondly, he removed the grate, which ash stuck to from time to time and had to be cleaned. He replaced it with a heating spiral. Its coils are located close to each other not allowing fuel to fall behind it. Thirdly, he made good steam. It is known that the steam should be superheated in order to increase the system's efficiency and use as much water as possible to replace fuel. And what can heat steam better than a temperature of about 1000 degrees developing in this zone? Besides, the steam makes slag crumbly enabling to use coal and transverse gasifiers, where ash will now crumble rather than sinter due to the steam. A couple of gold doubloons from you to my accounts will make my day. My payment details are under the video. See you soon.